What's up YouTube? This is Bus Saiyan here. Um, I thought I'm going to do something different this time. Um, I have actually managed to purchase um, a used set of the 1999 uh, Tokyo World Championships. Well, one set, I mean one deck out of the four that was released. This is the Kai Bude um, deck. And um, I got it because my friend had um, the the black the black control one, um, and I've actually tried my modern affinity or robots deck against that, and it's pretty hard to play around powder kegs with a modern deck. Um, but it was fun, uh, and and uh, you know we thought that I'm gonna get, well I thought I'm gonna try and get one of these, but these are quite rare to find. Um, but I have managed to get one, and um, we have tried the deck. We only play once, but I really, really like what this deck does. Actually, um, it's kind of like my style of game because I, I always really like playing with artifacts. Um, don't know why it's just a thing. I always thought that um, it's kind of different because most people would obviously have color decks. Um, and ever since I started playing Magic, which was back at nineteen ninety nine. Um, I was always very much into artifacts, uh, so I'm glad that I've chosen this deck. But anyway, I'm gonna go through it now and share it with you guys. Um, he won the 1999 Tokyo World Championships, by the way. So this is uh, this used to be the best deck, if you like it. All right, so we got one Karn, uh, Silver Golem. Um, by the way, this deck has loads of rares. Obviously, these aren't uh, tournament legal cards, but um, they look just as uh, like you know legit cards uh, with the with the golden uh, little um, uh, side thingy. Uh, so Karn is really good in this deck because you got loads of ramp um, uh, stones, mana stones, and stuff, and for one mana you can turn them into uh, artifact creatures and attack in. Got three Masticore. Uh, <laughs> it's really powerful. I mean a 4-4-4-4 four, 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 uh, is pretty good on its own. It can ping and you can regenerate it. Uh, the only thing you gotta do is you have to discard a, a card from your hand in every upkeep to keep it running and that's why you probably only chose to run three. Uh, and the main beast in the deck is a full play set of uh, Covetous Dragon. Uh, it's a 6-5 flying for uh, 5 mana. And you have to control artifacts, otherwise you have to um, sacrifice Covetous Dragon. But it's a beast, I mean it's huge. You know, When this comes into play and you have a Masticore, that's basically a 2 turn clock. Um, so yeah. Pretty cool. And the art. I mean, the art on these cards are just absolutely exquisite. I love them. Right now, uh, I'm going to get into the uh, Mana Ram cards. So we got four Thren Dynamo. Uh, you know what he does. Um, obviously, a staple in a deck like this. Got four. Grim Monolith, um, again, uh, one of the best Rem cards back in the days. Got four Fire Diamonds, um, obviously to have more red mana available of artifacts. Uh, and we got two Worn Power Stone, um, which I think maybe the deck could maybe have maybe another one and maybe three fire diamonds uh, but you know he obviously knew what he was doing when he put this deck together uh, now the deck has a bit of a control aspect to it and I'm gonna get to it now the idea of this deck is that you basically wipe your opponent's board off with wildfire um, if you don't know what this card does, uh, each player sacrifices four lands, then Wildfire deals four damage to each creature. 
So that would mean that it would kill your Mastic Orb, but uh, you're supposed to have enough mana rocks to regenerate it. And if you have a Covetous Dragon in play, then obviously that wouldn't be killed after Wildfire. Uh, and sacrificing four lands for you is not a massive drawback, because you would uh, probably have quite a few mana rocks in play that you know would obviously still stay in play, so you can still generate mana after a Wildfire, whereas your opponent would be... Uh, just basically um, pushed four turns back. Uh, there are two Mishra's Helix in here, uh, just basically to keep tapping your opponent's lands off um, if you don't get a Wildfire or whatever, if it gets countered. Uh, I think this is a pretty good card. Uh, a five cost is a bit hefty of a price for it, though, but back in the days that wasn't a big thing, really. And we got four uh, copies of Temporal Aperture here, which I think is a brilliant card. Uh, uh, when I've played this deck, I really, <laughs> I had, I really enjoyed. I had much fun using this uh, artifact. Um, first of all, it's cheap. Uh, it is two, uh, two of any uh, mana. I'm really confused still whether I can say colorless or, or whatever I can say. I, I don't know. I think uh, Wizards of the Coast had probably made a bit of a mistake with bringing in these new colorless mana things but never mind that's just my my opinion I don't want to get into the argument anyway um, what they do and how they do it and then we got four curse scroll uh, which is again a really fun card to play um, you're obviously not meant to have too many cards left in your hand if you play this deck and if you have like let's say a mountain or a couple of mountains left in your hand then you can just name uh, Mountain as the card and you can deal 2 damage to your opponent every turn. Um, this used to be a staple card back in the days in most of the decks. Um, and I can totally understand why. Uh, now for the Grim Monolith uh, and all the stones that come into play tapped, we got 4 Water Keys in the deck. Um, it is just, um, you know, it's a staple, you would need this in the deck and again you know, the art is just brilliant. I love these cards. These cards are so beautiful. Um, right now, onto lands. Uh, Mr. Boudet ran three ancient tombs. Um, you know what it does, obviously. If you don't, uh, it gives you two colorless and it deals two damage to you. He ran four city of traitors. Um, which can be a um, good card to play if you have your uh, mountains in play and you don't want to play any more lands um, or if you're just coming back after a wildfire or something City of Traders can be a really good um, card to have in play it gives you two colorless mana but if you play another land you have to sacrifice it and then the deck's got uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and the deck's got 13 um, mountains and that's basically it that's basically it I love that it's got the the singleton uh, corn uh, I just love the art and I love that you know throughout the history of magic he then became a planeswalker I think that's pretty cool that you know you got that flavor of old characters coming back more powerful um, and especially for like a golem creature like silver, obviously a golem um, technically is supposed to, um, you know, guard its creator. But you know, uh, Karn managed to break free, which is pretty cool. Um, anyway, um, enough of the worthless stuff. I'm gonna get onto the sideboard, uh, and if you don't know, you can distinguish the sideboard cards by having a little SB just there. Uh, so that's how you know that that's uh, a cyborg card. Uh, we start off with a singleton Phyrexian processor. Um, yeah, good card. I think it is just another way to introduce uh, more creatures into the game. Uh, with a single copy, don't know how much you can achieve with it, but um, when it comes down, it can be definitely very powerful. Um, you know, basically every time you got four mana, which is a green monolith activation in the land, um, you bring down a, a minion token. Um, 
um, equal to like you know you sacrifice you sacrifice five power you bring in now five five so four mana that's pretty good uh, as another mistress helix so you can ramp up to three copies in the deck if needed uh, three earthquakes in the signboard it's just basically uh, removal we got four spell shock um, I think this can be very useful uh, especially against control decks uh, decks that play many um, spells um, whereas you can you know you can obviously minimize your spell plays with just having one big game play and then having a couple of spell shocks and keeping your opponent in bay um, we got two copies of boil uh, that's obviously against the blue decks as always they've, they've been feared from day one in the history of magic and then we have artifact removal we have two shattering pools which I think again that artwork guys I think I just love it um, I just love it I think the the old the old style of, uh, of magic um, art is just exquisite uh, anyway and to finish off we got two wreck and rune uh, again this is a uh, artifact removal so there's a sideboard and like I said I this is this was probably the best 20 pounds um, I've spent for a long time you get a full deck I know you obviously can't use it on tournaments but to be honest most of the time I I just play around the kitchen table with friends um, so you know having a deck like this can be you know a lot of fun it takes you back to to the old days of magic you know the golden age of magic um, and to be honest you know when you get these uh, um, tournament decks they used to be really competitive so you know when you when you play with them you can you can still sense that kind of power uh, that they must have felt uh, playing these decks back in the days there's, there's so many there's so many rares wildfires are rares mistress helix are rares temporal aperture um, what else obviously ancient tomb city of traders corn masticor the color of dragons that dude really knew what he was doing but no I love this deck it can ramp up really fast actually surprisingly fast uh, but you've seen the amount of mana rocks you got in there so that's not really a, a surprise um, the, the only thing that I would prefer, uh, I would definitely run two Karn uh, and I would run only two Masticor, uh, but that's my own personal preference. Or maybe even keep the three Masticors and just uh, don't know, take out maybe uh, a Mistress Helix. Yeah, I would probably do that. Uh, side another Mistress Helix. But like I said, obviously I'm not criticizing the deck. Uh, this is this is a perfect deck. Obviously, won the 1999 Tokyo Championship, so it is, it is, it can't be any better. It's just my personal preference that that uh, um, I'm saying here. But you know, if you guys want to have some really good fun, uh, and if if you just want to move away from your your standard deck or your modern deck, uh, it is quite you know if if you have the chance, pick one of these up because. Um, uh, it's quite a, it's quite a, a lovely little thing to to spend a, a couple of hours on a Saturday afternoon playing with one of these old 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 school decks, uh, and actually getting this, uh, I really I, I dug up my uh, my old uh, magic cards like uh, uh, what's Fires of Yavimaya and uh, and Horn Kavu and and stuff like that. So kind of like the uh, uh, Invasion Armageddon Plane Shift sort of error. Uh, that's where I was like first really into magic and just finding those cards going through them finding my separating bursts and I don't know blast of the arms it was it's quite cool so I'm, I'm thinking maybe I'm just gonna go back and and build one of these old decks again and um, uh, just move away a little bit because I play usually modern I can't I can't afford a, a legacy or vintage to be honest um, so <laughs> yeah this is a great chance to to give you that experience but anyway guys thanks thanks for watching the video uh, please rate subscribe and comment and to my new subscribers thank you very much for joining me um, welcome to the channel I'm gonna try to be a bit more proactive with making videos such like 
such like this uh, and just make sure you guys are entertained whenever you tune into my channel so cheers Busty and signing out peace out YouTube